all this technical training, of course, you know, can inspire students to uh, or practitioners to get into thermal comfort design and and learn the concepts and, and feel comfortable with it. But some instances might need other ways of inspiring uh, you know, the practitioners to become conversant with the concepts of, of thermal comfort and then feel motivated enough to actually build this into their design thinking. So what are some of the teachers, teaching aids we could harness? One teaching aid could be doing an exercise with students to join the dots inside a thermal comfort chart which then define the thermal comfort zone. So what could be is uh, what could be done is on a psychrometric chart you could plot these points of dry bulb 20 degrees, RH of 20 percent, so on and so forth and come up with a box and what one could do is one could then question is this box a rigid and a limiting force or is it uh, liberal enough and is it is it progressive enough to enable creative building design through adaptive comfort models, right? So this is one exercise that could be done. Another very powerful tool for teaching thermal comfort, especially for engineering uh, students or people practicing air conditioning uh, consulting, would be to use this tool, which is nothing but a an interface built on those mathematical principles that we talked about of predicted mean vote and percentage of people dissatisfied. As you can see, here are the input variables that we already spoke about. This here provides you immediately the predicted mean vote that it would lead to the value and the percentage of people dissatisfied because of this predicted mean vote. This immediately allows you to do iterative sort of calculations so that you can change things like air temperature, air speed, humidity level, so on and so forth and see whether we can meet predicted mean vote and percentage of people dissatisfied at the most efficient level. So, uh, in terms of using this as a tool for energy efficiency, one can immediately recognize that playing around with air temperature is a very environmentally and economically costly affair. Right? Can we, rather than playing around with this and dropping just the air temperature, which has been the strategy for almost uh, all uh, air conditioned buildings, right? they just know how to play around with the air temperature. Can we rather play around with things like air speed and mean radiant temperature to achieve the same amount of thermal comfort while not having an excessive amount of energy consumption. So this tool allows you to become creative energy conserving building designers and thermal comfort engineers. These are tools that could be of course used for professional practice but they are also effective teaching aids to understand thermal comfort. These are data loggers, real time uh, uh, measurers of thermal comfort. This is what's called a psychrometer. It measures the dry and wet bulb temperature so that you can actually start plotting your own weather points on the psychrometric chart. Here are wind speed measurement instruments. This is called an anemometer. This is, these are two examples of it. And this is a simple, uh, what's called a psychrometer. It's a digital psychrometer. This is this in, in uh, this is this in digital form, right? Yes, so this concludes our training on thermal comfort and, and indoor air quality and the uh, so sometimes competing needs of these two very important issues in building design. If you have other questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, on our email addresses or through our portal fairconditioning.org. Thank you very much.